Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Uh, today you're looking at something different, uh, not the Mustang. We're doing work on the new 1993 Jeep Wrangler, or YJ. Uh, this has a uh, four liter straight six engine in it. And uh, cut right to the chase here. I'm doing a little bit of preventive maintenance on it. And I'm also gonna try to fix a little bit of an idle issue that I just don't like. Uh, it's not, detri not detrimental to the way it drives but it's one of those things where I can see it's a small problem that will get bad over time if I don't go ahead and um, do the necessary repairs here. So you can see here I have the throttle body um, exposed. I have the uh, air cleaner, um, what you want to call that? The air cleaner duct? I don't even know. I'm drawing a blank. Uh, anyway, the intake disconnected from the throttle body and did a little bit of cleaning on the throttle body. I had a little bit more to do on it, um, but I also went on ahead and pulled off all the necessary sensors uh, so I can show you over here when I have a mix of all the sensors that I feel are going to be problematic in the future. And rather than just replace one and then wait a couple months and then replace another one or wait a year and replace another one, I mean, all these sensors have, you know, at least what the truck has on it, 140,000 miles. Um, you know, maybe some of them have been replaced, maybe some of them haven't, I have no idea. But I figured do them all at the same time and not have to worry about it later on. So uh, get right into it here. This is the idle air control valve. Uh, this, this basically controls all aspects of the idle when it's just sitting there idling. Uh, right now I have a surging issue where it'll idle fine, bog down to about three or 400 RPM, kick back up, and then run fine again 40 seconds later, so on and so forth. I have a feeling this is the culprit. It is, this one is also stuck out, you'll notice. This one is not. In addition to that, throttle position sensor. This is the throttle position sensor. It tells the computer where the throttle is at any given time. It controls the air fuel ratio. Uh, tells the fuel injectors what to do. This, not sure if it's bad or not, but again, if it's got 140,000 miles on it, why not replace it? So here's the new one here. Uh, over here, this is obvious to most people. This is an oxygen sensor. This goes in the um, exhaust pipe down on the, underneath the truck. I'll show you where it goes. 22 millimeter socket, take that out. I actually use the 22 millimeter wrench. You don't need an O2 socket for this application. You can get a wrench in there just fine. This is a new one, um, new oxygen sensor. Comes with its own connector. Uh, this is the four, really four prong in there. Uh, that's the NTK oxygen sensor. There's your part number, it's upside down. 23023. So in case you're wondering, that's the oxygen sensor that goes in your Jeep. This is the air temperature sensor. Uh, this one has seen better days. It's got some uh, carbon buildup on it. it looks kind of old. Um, why the hell not replace it? I think it was like $11. So while you're in there, drop a new one in. There's the new one. You can see the red wire in there all nice and clean. And manifold absolute pressure map sensor. Uh, this is the old one. It's got a GM stamp on it, which is interesting to me. I don't know really why it's a GM. Maybe they're all made by GM. I have no idea, but here's the new one. And this one does not have any GM stamp on it, but it does say G127, so I'm not sure I have not decoded those. So that's that. Here's all the part numbers for the respected parts you see on my bench, in case anyone is interested in doing this themselves. Uh, total cost for all of this, and then this stuff, which is just to me maintenance whenever I get a new vehicle, fuel filter, new wires, cap, rotor. This is an AC relay. I'm gonna try to, that's gonna be another video. I'm gonna try to fix the AC. I have a feeling it might be that, but it's probably not. And some decent plugs some auto lights. Total bill on this is going to be about 306 bucks, 300 bucks. Uh, if you use a promo code over at Advance. Um, all these parts are supposedly brand new, so we shall see. Okay, the first sensor we're going to do here is the MAP sensor. 
And the map sensor is held in old school. It uses these right here, just two bolts and nuts. But this is pretty simple. Here's your map sensor here. This just seats, there's a plate right here up on the back center of your firewall. And that just seats right there and you'll see the holes will line up just like that. And drop one in there. Hard. This is lifted up, this Jeep's lifted up a little bit, so this happens again when you don't have a cameraman to help you out. I'm just gonna get this one on here hand tight. And here's the other bolt. And it's weird, like all these sensors are, I mean, you know, if this were a Honda or something like that, I mean, each sensor is like $250. So doing preventative maintenance sensor-wise is kind of crazy. But this Jeep stuff, I mean, you're talking 30, 40 bucks a sensor, sometimes 20 bucks a sensor. I just feel like it's a no-brainer to, to do them because these things can make you, like they can drive you crazy with the symptoms that they'll do. And this doesn't need to be super tight, just a couple of snug turns because remember, you're tightening this into uh, plastic essentially is what it is or polymer so you don't want to go too crazy over tight just snug is enough so you just want to tighten those up a little bit and here's your connector it's a green connector simple look for your clip side which is here go straight up and it'll plug up and give you a little reassurance that it's in which it is that one didn't click here's a vacuum line don't forget to connect that. That goes up underneath there. Bingo, so you have your vacuum, you have your electrical signal, all going back in. Okay, here we are working right here. So you're looking straight down onto the throttle body. So here's the uh, intake going into the throttle body, straight down. And where we're working here is right here, right next to the fuel rail, right here. This is where your idle air control valve is gonna go. Let's also pay attention to one thing here before we go any farther. You can put this in one of two ways. You can go this way or this way, depending on the connector. And a good rule of thumb, if you didn't pay attention, which I didn't, but if you look at the wire here, you'll notice how it's kind of going in this way. See how it's trained to kind of hook that way? So we wanna make sure the connector side is facing um, the fender. So, we're gonna do here is just get the bottom screw started in here. You go grab my Torx, I believe it's a T20. I wanna use a T20 on it. Torx screwdriver, or you can use a socket, your, your preference. And this is probably the most annoying uh, bolt to get to because you kinda gotta go under this harness to screw around with it so this may not be the best shot in the world but there you go it's a little bit better angle so what I did was I just put the bottom screw you got a top screw here there's one down there and I kind of just came in at an angle underneath that way and got that one tight let's get the other one in there like I said these these two screws are probably the hardest to get to if you want to consider any of this difficult it's really not. Just really a big thing to pay attention to is just be careful your wiring harness and your vacuum lines not to really put any pressure on them and stuff as you're working here. So I'm just putting this screw in here. And everything should twist in nice and easy. If it starts to feel like it's too tight or something, back it off. Don't cross thread it. You don't want to buy any throttle body. Okay, so on that, that one's installed. This is where the plug will go once it's all set, right in there, but we're not gonna do it yet. We're gonna go ahead and do the throttle position sensor next. And I already, when I took it, the old one out, I put my screws back in the bosses so I don't lose them. Back these out carefully. Yeah, and also you'll notice, I just wanted to see if that was true. Back here, 
on this side, the, the what you would think is the bottom, it's not, it's the top. You'll notice this actually bumps into this little groove. You'll see two little two little grooves right here. They won't fit. So definitely goes in this way. So I'll line it back up. Like that. And it's spring loaded, or you can feel a little tension on there, so it wants to rotate clockwise. You just leave it sit there. Get your longer, again, T20 screws, and I'm going to get them just started by hand. And a lot of this video is probably going to just be the back of my hands, but you get the idea. Got that one started in there. Do the same for this one. Get it started. And they spin in nice and easy. No tension or no resistance. That's how you want it. Get your torques nice and straight as you're coming in. You don't want to don't want to come in at an angle like this. So if I were to just kind of come in from the top, that could cause the screw to round out. I mean, this is obvious mechanics 101, but people get in a hurry, and the next thing you know, they got a stripped out screw, and they're using my how to use a screw extractor video to which just broke a million views, which is insane. They'll be using that video to get the screw out. But this time you'll have to drill it. That'll suck. Bad. I'll probably pull the whole throttle body off, obviously, before I drill that out. Get that one in there snug, come in here, do the same thing. This, this vacuum line really gets in your way when you're trying to tighten down, so just be careful. Again, all we're looking for here is snug because these are sensors. You're not looking to, you're not tightening down a lug nut. Snug will do it. That's snug, perfect, cool. Okay, up next is the intake air temperature sensor. This guy right here. And you're looking straight down on the intake manifold here. Uh, we're working right there in that hole that you see next to that reddish color tube. So, since this is brass, I'm gonna use a little bit of this thread sealer on here. This is just extra precaution. I'm just gonna kinda run it right along the threads right here. Um, only because it is brass and I've got bad experiences with leaks with um, various brass parts that go into steel or aluminum pieces. So, it goes without saying, use a little sealer. That's all you need, just a tiny bit, not a lot. Make sure you don't get any on the sensor part. And we're gonna come in straight down. Here it is. Straight down, do not tap it against the sides. And then we're gonna to start to slowly thread it in. And you'll notice it threads in nice. And then the socket we are gonna use here is a three quarter. Right here, it's gonna go right on there. You want to just snug them up. They're not, you're not looking to torque these things down like a tire, just to where she stops wanting to really turn and then another little eighth of a turn. That's all it needs. So we'll go ahead and grab our harness here, find our it's the smallest one of the three that are disconnected. It's this end right here. Go with the clip side facing in. Should make a nice little clip, click sound. So I line it up, I can barely see. There we go, that's in. Let's connect our idle air control valve. That's this one, the blue on it. Go ahead and carefully take your time on these. Click in. And this is the last throttle position sensor right here. TPS goes into the throttle body sensor we just replaced. Nice and easy. So it clicks. There we go. 
so that's the three main sensors that are on the throttle body. What you're going to want to go ahead and do, if you've got any idle issues or you just want to just knock them out while you're down there or while you're in there, so there are any more problems. So let's move now under the car and do the O2 sensor. Okay, here we are under the Jeep and this is our oil pan right here. Looking up, and you'll see the underneath of the engine. There's your header. Goes into that collector, follow it down, bingo. You're gonna take this protective plastic cover off of here, just like that. And it's already got your grease on there. That's anti-seize. That's for the two metals, when they get hot, they'll seize up. If they don't have them on there, this already had it on there. If you don't have it on there, add some anti-seize. You will appreciate it down the road, or the future owner will appreciate it. Uh, that's what makes these so hard to get out. Uh, put that on there. That goes up into the uh, boss that's up here, and then I'll show you the connection. Okay, here we are. Got this, this just hand tightened in here. And I'm gonna use a 22 mil. And you could use just a regular wrench on this. It's a 22 millimeter. We're gonna go ahead and snug it up. Do one snug turn. Again, you're not trying to, look, to torque down a damn tire, so just two until she stops. Eighth of a turn after that. Done. What you want for your O2 sensor. Then you got your wire here. This is your connector. And if you look right there, see that little hole? This little piece, if you want to do this correctly, this little piece, this little, it looks like a, like a body clip. That body clip goes in, up on top, and seats in there just like that. Can you see that now? Here's our harness coming in off the engine harness, comes down, that connects into your O2 sensor. So you want to just make the connection, tuck your wire in up on this little, this little rack up here. You want to tuck your wire in here, make sure your body clip comes down through there. You don't want this wire, a lot of guys say, since the proximity is so close to the drive shaft, which is here, you got your U-joint there, your drive shaft, the wire comes out of there, gets stuck in the drive shaft, and bam, rips it apart, then you're running rich, truck starts running like shit, don't know what's wrong, that's what's wrong, you didn't pay attention. So, let's go ahead and do that now. Okay, there's our connection there. You can see the little body clip it goes through that bracket. And what I did uh, to prevent any possible um, wires coming out and getting into that drive shaft. And then I had it just kind of coiled them up there and did a little zip tie on there, trimmed the zip tie off. So now there's no way uh, these are gonna go anywhere. Let me go ahead and back it out so you can see. So these, there's no way that they're gonna make contact with that drive shaft. And then also they're up here in this rack, they're hanging up, there's a little hanger back here. So it comes through, header, comes into your, comes in, down from your header. O2 sensor goes into the pipe. Okie dokie, let's start this baby up. Off camera I did also do the plugs and wires, cap and rotor. That's pretty simple. If you don't know how to do that, you shouldn't have been doing what I was doing. So, let's see. Purr. Nice. And I'll tell you right off the bat, what I don't smell is that rich fuel smell that I smelled uh, before we started this job. I did notice that, I just thought it was maybe rich. Throttle's much more responsive as well. So I think all in all, good repair. So yeah guys, if you got a Jeep that's uh, just running like kind of like a dog and you don't know what to do, do what I just did. Save yourself the headaches. And I think you'll be glad you like the results.
I know